Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar, and here's a brand new halacha for you, and it's for Monday, the 30th day of December. Here we go. On Shabbos, you are not allowed to instruct a non-Jew to do uh, malacha for you, to do work for you. Now, that, an example of that would be, you see a room that's pitch black, and you ask a non-Jewish person on Shabbos, could you please turn on that light for me? You're not allowed to do that. That's called amir la'akum, telling something directly to a non-Jew. And uh, it's just a disgrace to Shabbos when you directly ask a non-Jew to do Shabbos work for you. He is allowed to do work on Shabbos, there's no doubt about that, but when you ask him directly to do it for you, that's when it is prohibited. However, that's not the end of a whole story because sometimes you might be asking him something to do. It's best when we give you exact examples so that no confusion could happen. Let's do this next example where some leniency is available. Let's say you um, have a bit of a kiddush at your house and the kitchen floor got dirty and you want to ask the non-Jew, the non-Jew in your home who's helping you with that kiddush to mop the flo- to, well, to clean the floor for you, I should say. Now, um, if you said to him, please mop the floor for me, and you basically told him to do it in a way that would involve squeezing out liquids from a mop or things like that, that would be just as bad as asking him to turn on or off the light, which you're not allowed to do on Shabbos if you're directly asking him to do malacha or work for you. However, when it comes to something like cleaning the floor, if you just say, could you please clean the floor for me, and he's got two ways to do that, one that would involve, let's say, mopping it and squeezing out the mop, which you're not allowed to ask him to do, but he has other ways that he could get this done that would not involve malacha, like, I don't know, spilling out some water on the floor and then pushing the water across the floor with a squeegee or something. Since it is possible for him to do it in a permissible way, and it is possible for him to do it in an impermissible way, and you just ask him in general, could you clean the floor for me, he has has two venues in front of him and you didn't tell him to do the prohibited way, you just said please clean the floor for me. So in such a situation you're allowed to ask the non-Jew to clean the floor for you, even if you think it's likely that he's going to do it in the not permissible way, as long as you didn't tell him to do it in the permissible way, then it's allowed because he's choosing on his own to do it in a way that's kind of like he knows he's got to clean the floor for you, there's a permissible way and a not permissible way, and for his own convenience he's choosing the way that involves malacha. That's not considered like your problem. And so you could ask a non-Jew in that type of situation to clean the floor for you just in a general clean way and you're not telling him to mop or squeeze him up and then if he chooses to squeeze them up that's his own decision and in that type of situation it's permissible now don't go willy-nilly in applying this to the law in a hundred million different ways that you think are comparable because there might be jumps in the comparison that you're not aware of so be careful and if you want to do this in other forms or fashions speak to your rabbi before Uh, jumping right into it. We're going to try over the next day or two to give you a couple more examples of this law where it is and isn't permissible. Thanks for logging on. Log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.